compete. And uh, it, it was his first show. I love Dawson. He's a great client. He's my first bodybuilding overall ever. So that's the fifth overall for my team since May. So every month we've gotten an overall. Well, not exactly. You know what I mean? Like if you, if you divide it up into months, it's been on average one overall per month. And it's almost kind of been lined up like that. So, I mean, we're doing something right. It's, it's working. Um, but he cheated so hard yesterday. I gave him like a day where he could have one free meal and I normally don't do that. And I usually give it to the people who I think have a little more discipline, but I always forget it's his people's first show and it's fucking hard to reel it in. So it's on me for giving him a free meal yesterday, but he's so shredded already. It's like, He'll, he'll be he'll be peeled again in like three days so and bro I pushed him so hard for this first show because like I just wanted him to get shredded like I want him like 85 90 percent at this first show that way the the five and a half weeks between that show and nationals or like five weeks isn't as hard so now we can like obviously he's gonna have to you know reel it back in for a couple days and then um, we'll just kind of just chill until nationals slight deficit maybe a little bit more cardio but we're, the goal is to be like ready two weeks out and like feed him into the show but especially bodybuilding, he's, he's going to be going against some big dudes. Nationals is always pretty intense. I mean, Trevor Birch won last year. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. Didn't Trevor Birch he won? won? The overall, right? He was the first lightweight to win the yeah. overall, I think, in years. Is, light he is it light heavies or lightweight? I have no idea how it's these bodybuilding things work. <laughs> All I know is the, the, the weight cutoffs. But he was in, like, the lowest class, yeah. and he won the whole show. So, like, you know, that shows you that, like, size and height. It's not really necessarily everything, so... Um, anyways, reeling all that back in, we're at Lyft ATX. I officially got a membership here again because it's not 120 degrees outside. It was never 120, but it felt like it. So it's like been perfect the last few days. I'm super excited. I'm sure it's going to be sunny here and there, but it's a great gym. Honestly, I'm probably just going to mainly work out here because I'm so busy through the end of the year and they have everything I need. I actually love these type of gyms. So it's like a kind of like a more of a grungy outdoor barn style you know, you know, work out when you work out here. So it's cool. Um, you guys will see. Uh, but that being said, I wanted to give you guys a quick update on just kind of post show things. You know, every, every, every YouTube video, I feel like we have a new update, right? Uh, and this time it is, man, I'm just like, I'm super motivated, but like balancing everything is so hard. Like, honestly, I'm, I'm not even going to sit on here and try to like act like I have it all figured out. Like I'm still trying to learn all these things at the same time. And it's, it's hard. It's, it's freaking hard. Um, you know, I have six clients doing nationals. I have three clients competing before nationals and that's all within five weeks. And I've had a client compete every weekend for the past like two weeks. So it's just like this, this whole like three months, this last quarter of the year, honestly, has just been super stressful and I'm supposed to start my off season, um, here in the next few months. So, you know, trying to make sure I'm on top of my health supplements. I'm really trying to make sure that I'm, you know, staying as consistent as I can in the gym, but I do understand there's going to be, have to be some give and take. You can't do both and be hundred percent all the time on both. It's just not, it's not possible. And honestly, I don't think it's healthy if you're hundred percent on bodybuilding year round. I really don't. I think, I think there needs to be some give and take with that and some push and pull. Um, you know, you can push really hard for a prep and for a se even like a season. Right. But think about it like this. I, I do next year. I do a show. I'm not saying what show I'm doing. I don't know hundred percent what my first show is. I know a couple shows that I'm doing for sure, but I don't know the first show date yet. But, um, imagine this, right? I compete mid year, mid year. And then I have to stretch out all the way until October. That's a long time. Like June to October doesn't sound like a long time, but when you're shredded for the first show, bro, you can get in your head. You can get in your head, you, you can get injured. There's a lot of things that can go on during that time. So I'm thinking in the future right now, me and my coach, and we're like, all right, let's focus on the business right now. Let's focus on coaching. Let's get all the clients the best possible placing we can at their shows, which we have been. And then, you know, come January, once all that stress drops off and we're in a better spot to push, why don't we start pushing then? That's, that's when we're going to get the most out of it. Cause I'll tell you what'll happen right now. I've done this in the past when you're stressed and there's all these other things in life and you try to shove a cycle on top of it. And then you hold yourself to that standard that you need to be held to on cycle. Your whole world can fall down in front of you. You, you forget, you forget to do one thing for a client and then it spirals. You forget to do one thing for yourself and then it spirals. It's, it's all about balance and it's all about timing things right in the sport. Um, especially when you coach on top of it. So just some stuff of what I'm going through. 
Uh, I just want to keep it real on here. You know, a lot of people will probably get on and they'll be like, oh, you know, everything's perfect. I'm balancing everything perfectly. Um, you know, I can manage this many clients perfectly, all that stuff. And you're like, I don't really think you are. I don't, I don't really think you are because I'm doing that right now and it's hard as fuck, you know? And I am young and I have a lot to learn. So I'm excited for the, for the journey and like what's to come. But man, yeah, it's, it's been a lot. So I'm, I'm grateful for my girlfriend. I'm grateful for my friends. I'm grateful for Christian, everybody who's kind of just like, keep going, bro. <laughs> keep doing it. And I'm like, let's fucking go. So, um, we're going to go crush this workout. Um, I was, I went to my massage this morning and I thought it was Thursday. <laughs> so, uh, I went in at 10 instead of three cause Thursday's at three, Monday's at 10. And he said, you're too early. And I'm like, I'll be back later. So we decided to film right now. And, um, so we're going to get like an hour, hour and a half workout in, kill it. Um, we're going to hit back today. The goal was to get the massage before this because my back's fucked up, <laughs> but we're going to train through it. Um, and maybe I can tell you guys some tips and tricks on like, if you maybe can't afford body work all the time, or you um, are struggling with, you know, tightness in certain areas, what you can do to kind of work around that. So who knows? I don't know if I'll bring that up. I don't know if I'll just lock in as soon as I start working out, but we will see. And let's kill this workout. See how long the, the long sleeve lasts. It's a good idea. Good spirit. Fucking big for this thing. Seriously, my, my arms don't even fit in it. I gotta be using it wrong, bro. There's no way. <laughs> What'd you say? So maybe you should go open after all. No. <laughs> Dude, fuck that shit. Dude, people are like, this guy's so back and forth. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. No, like, I really do feel like I was using it wrong. Oh, there we go. That's what I was doing. Bro, this is the most jankity shit I've ever seen. This is how you adjust it? Yeah, I ain't fucking with that. I'll do one more set. A little heavier. <laughs> Deltoids. That's perfect, bro. It's like, doink. <laughs> oh my gosh.
I need body work, bro, bad. My whole right side's like way too open. My left side's like, I'm like, I feel like I'm doing this. That's what's going on in my head. I'll do one more here. A short lift though. I don't have much in me today. <laughs> New client. I have a wait list, which is fucking crazy because like a year ago I was like struggling to get any clients. It's crazy how life works, you know? You really put everything you have into something and it pays off. Look at Christian. I mean, I'm serious. Like, look at that. Like, bro, we connected and you were already doing great things, but you, you were nowhere near where you are now. You can hit any like popular person up and they're gonna shoot with you and pay you. Like it's just how it is. So I mean you, you had the best pictures of Chris Bumstead on stage at the Olympia. In my in, honestly, in my opinion, I think you did. Like seriously. That that fucking shot like this or whatever it was. What was it like that or like this? I'll put it right here. Oh bro, yeah. That that was that is the cleanest picture this year of Chris ever. I can't say ever. I can't say ever. He's had a lot of great pictures. But this year, Christian definitely had the best picks, in my opinion. Time to run this shit. Oh yeah. since my fucking show. Let's go. Got that shit on video. Woo! You have no idea. I've been struggling so hard with like just getting this shit in the gym and just feeling it. And my back's fucked up. So that means next week it'll be better. Boom. slower focus on like the actual getting the blood in there building that my muscle connection back this is something that nobody ever talks about it's my muscle connection over time it comes and goes if you've experienced this before you know what I'm talking about if you have it then listen because you don't um, <laughs> obviously your my muscle connection is most likely gonna be better when you're leaner because there's less fat you just have a better my muscle connection with the muscle when you have less fat on your body right I think that's like across the board for everybody obviously it's subjective but I notice it and a lot of my clients notice it. My girlfriend notices it, my friends notice it. My muscle connection's always way better when you're leaner. But if you can keep it high during the off season, you're gonna grow way more. Your muscle's gonna look better. If it's all sloppy and you don't really give a shit, it's gonna show in your physique. So that's why I'm so hard on myself, like I just said, is because I hold myself to the standard. And it's, Sometimes it fucks you in the head a little bit when you're trying to work out all the time and you're just like, you know, you just, you're not at that standard because you're like, your mind muscle connection's not there, you're depleted, you're off cycle, whatever it might be. But when you can just like hold yourself to that standard, when you do get back there at some point, it's crazy. You know, it's crazy, it's a good feeling. And that was literally just now, so it's cool I got that on video. Because that's three months accumulation almost of me just being in my head about my form, me being in my head about my strength, and just me being in my head about this off season, honestly. And that feeling that good, that one set made my whole week. So that's how this, like, pay attention to the small wins because, you know, the, the little losses and the little hardships that you go through can really pile up, especially on the off season. You don't have the visuals that you like. You don't have the adrenaline that you have when you're on prep. You don't have that immediate goal to look towards. So, you know, if you're like me and you're struggling, take those small wins and make those bigger in your head because that's how you're going to be able to navigate on the off season. So just a little tip. Let's go 
look over here. this fast and like I mean since prep. What was on the pre-workout? What? What was the pre-workout? It was different today. Okay, that's a good point. Christian has a good point. The pre-workout was different today. We did one and a half we did one and a half scoops of EVP 3D mocha. I don't know if mocha is the reason. I think it's the same thing but we'll see. I'm gonna do this again tomorrow. So I'll let you guys know how it is but one and a half scoops of EVP 3D mocha flavor. One cap full of, that's what it was. AQ. I did AQ an hour before I came here. So it's fully in my system. I usually drink AQ on the way here and I get kind of sick to my stomach and I always forget to take it earlier. Take it earlier. You might get a little sick to your stomach for a second, but it'll be better when you work out. Take it like 45 minutes before. That's what I did differently. That's totally what it is. The fucking glycerol, dude. I can't even move. I got this the is like uh, actually insane right now. What flavor do you have right now? Just the plain Tropic Thunder. Oh, I have the watermelon right now. Oh, that's such a good flavor. I don't like the apple. Yeah, I'm sponsored, but you guys can listen. I don't. I don't like the apple one. I think it tastes. It doesn't taste any different than normal AQ, in my opinion. I feel like I can't the Tropic it. Thunder, bro. Oh my gosh. It tastes like a pineapple. So good. I feel like I'm like a two gram cycle right now. This is insane. Oh, shaky. Let's do some curls and we'll do another rear delt movement and we're good. I've been keeping my workouts like an hour. If I feel good like an hour and a half, I think an hour is perfect for me right now.
look white. So I just got my lab work done and everything's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, I mean, yeah, there's stuff out of the reference range, but think about this. We're bodybuilders. We're directly, intentionally messing with our hormones for a different physique. That's something people don't understand. Um, a lot of coaches, like no offense to some coaches, but you have to realize, yes, healthy is healthy, but healthy for the average person that doesn't take in performance enhancing drugs is a lot different than healthy for somebody who does. Now that being said, things need to still be in reference ranges. Things still need to be within a certain, you know, range, right? You can't just have things all over the place and say, oh, I'm on cycle, it'll level out, right? That's not what I mean by that. I mean, if your liver is at the top end of the reference range or a little bit over, but you're taking a Rimbidex year round because you're on a cruise or you're taking allergy medication to help beta-2 receptors when you're on a prep. You can't, you can't expect things to be perfect when you're literally taking things to mess with certain markers. Do you see what I mean? Like, it doesn't make sense. So just have a little bit of like an open mind when you go into your lab work. Uh, if this is your first time getting lab work done, you don't know what to do, you don't even know how to go about it, link down below for Heather. She's my personal homie. She works with Morph Health and Wellness. Uh, by far the best clinic I've worked with two clinics um, and this is by far the best clinic I've ever worked with if you need things it's there within a week all prescriptions are there within a week testosterone HRT they like they have TRT HRT they have overall wellness they have peptides some agglutide if you're into that shit I don't recommend some agglutide or um, Ozempic I just think it's a terrible idea it messes up with your digestion that's a whole nother story for a different time but if you need access to these things with somebody to monitor you that knows what they're doing link below for Heather. She is amazing. She works with all my clients who, who want to work with her and she's been nothing but phenomenal. So um, Heather, you click the link down below, scroll down, pick Heather and you can uh, get a free consultation with her. So um, get labs done. She'll review it with you. I'm going to go ahead and play an audio message and I'm just going to drop my labs. Well, Christian's going to drop my labs on the screen here and I'm going to let her audio message play, breaking down everything she saw in my lab work that way you guys can have a better understanding we wanted to get on a zoom call so we could be like more like you know face to face for you guys but we just our, our, our schedules didn't line up and i wanted to get this out for you guys you know while it's happening because i just got this back like five days ago so um take a second listen to what she says read through my lab markers if you're interested it's super transparent i'm not hiding anything from you guys uh, the one thing i will say before we jump into that and that's going to be the end of the video so i'll outro it right now is my thyroid is finally healthy i don't know how I don't know how I didn't do anything to necessarily fix it. Um, I've been on thyroid medication, which I still am, but my what I mean by my thyroid being healthy is yes, I'm using thyroid hormone, right? T3 and T4, a blend of both to get my thyroid into a healthy spot, but my TSH, my thyroid stimulating hormone was all over the place. It was really high. Sometimes it was 10 times the reference range. Sometimes it was two or three times the reference range. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know what I'm talking about. It's always been kind of out of whack. It's 100% healthy in the normal ranges. So that is the biggest win that I could have ever asked for from this. Yes, liver's elevated. Yes, I believe my um, good cholesterol is extremely low. Um, I think my bad cholesterol is slightly elevated, but these are all things you can be expecting post cycle, right? So these are all things that we're gonna get back in the reference range. She recommends some stuff in there. So she's gonna break everything down for you guys. So listen up, pay attention to the screen. And if you guys want to learn from this, listen to what she has to say. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for tuning in and leave a comment down below uh, if you guys want to see certain content. All right. So looking over your labs, knowing that we rested two days prior, we drank a lot of water prior to this, and you're currently on a cruise dose of TRT and we're pretty much due for a shot at this time frame. So very, very happy here with how we have been able to kind of stabilize your thyroid. So TSH, T4, and T3 are all in a very healthy range here. Um, CBC looks great. Hemoglobin's not too high, which is also something we want to look at when someone's taking testosterone, making sure that that's not being driven up. Cardiovascular exercise can help keep this down, so good job there. Um, comprehensive metabolic panel. BUN only marginally high. Not something I'm concerned with with someone that has a lot of muscle mass. 
So when we're looking at kidney function on these labs, you know, creatinine and EGFR can be extremely skewed in someone with excessive muscle. So these normal reference ranges are not made for people with body structures like yours. That is why I check a size that and see. And so that's going to give us an adjusted GFR. So if size set and C is off, then we do have kidney dysfunction. But regardless of that, your kidney function looks fine on your comprehensive. It says your GFR is 86, which is great. We just wanted above 60 and creatinine is 1.2. But if we look at your adjusted GFR with a size set and C, it's actually 123, which is even better. Um, AST and ALT are high. That's expected from someone that trains and has been running um, performance enhancing meds. So ALT takes a little bit longer to come down. So it's going to look higher, which is again, expected. I would like to see these a little better knowing that we did take two rest days off, but I do suspect that these will continue to trickle down. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of revive liver. And so I believe we already have that in play for you, but if not, I would definitely go ahead and jump back on that um, just because of the milk thistle and then like bergamot. Lipid panel actually does not look bad considering um, LDL is 102. That's only three points too high. And honestly, more studies have come out showing that LDL is not quite as harmful um, cardiovascularly as we thought. So that's not really concerning. What I want to see here is an improvement in HDL. So omega-3, CoQ10, fatty acids, um, salmon, stuff like that that have good enriched um, fish oil type stuff is going to help raise that. So HDL is your good cholesterol that's going to help combat and keep any bad cholesterol from sticking to the arteries. So we definitely want that higher. B12 looks good. Um, LH and FSH are super low. That's expected on any man taking testosterone. They are very similar, um, looked at like a TSH. So when you have a stimulating hormone and you're giving your body that particular hormone, the stimulating hormones are shut off. So this is just because you're telling your body you don't need to make tests. I'm giving it to you. Testosterone 691, this is the very low end um, of what your test is running. I wouldn't mind seeing that a little bit higher, but also with you being due for a shot, it probably is a good bit higher than that on the days that you take your shots. Prostate looks good. Free test is actually still pending. A1C looks good, 5.1. Cortisol 19.1 for an AM is a good um, healthy cortisol level. It's not too high. Prolactin looks good, so we're not doing a lot of conversion. Estradiol is too high, 61.6. I want this below 40. Um, and so whatever estrogen blockade that we are doing, we need to increase that. Uh, also, if we're doing an oral estrogen blocker, I recommend taking that one hour before you take your test shot. So that way it's in your system when the testosterone hits. It prevents more of that conversion. Um, vitamin D, 37.7. I like to see this above 50. This is a little suboptimal. So I would like to see you on a D3, K2. So vitamin D um, helps with, you know, for bone mineralization. And so, but the K2 is going to help prevent calcium from depositing in the arteries. So you want to take it as a combo always. D3 is going to help calcium production and absorption, but we want to make sure that it doesn't absorb in the arteries. We want to push it to the bones. And that's where the K2 comes in. C-reactive protein is very high. Again, expected when we have PEDs in play, also expected when we have elevated LFTs because CRP is stimulated by high LFTs. Um, I think if we took like a full week off that this would look better, but still um, some cholesterol support, some liver support is going to help drive that down. And now that we are kind of on a cruise cycle and not blasting anymore. Insulin looks good. Thyroid peroxidase looks really good, so we're not um, bounding any thyroid hormone. And sex hormone binding globulin is low, but that's because of the PED use. It will kind of slowly start trickling back up a little bit. We don't want it super, super low, but we also don't want it high because we don't want those sex hormones bound up. So overall, considering that we are post-show and post-cycle, these look really good. Um, we've got some areas of opportunities, but nothing of blaring concern.